Hello everyone, I am Dr. Saurabh Dikshit and welcome to my channel. So, as promised, I am here back with one more video and today I have brought a very simple but special topic and the topic is aortic uh, aneurysms. As you see that the exams are around the corner and aortic aneurysms have been a very important topic. Always you get a lot of questions from aortic aneurysm. So before we start with this concept of aortic aneurysm, I would just try to concise all these things in uh, maybe 10-15 minutes. But before that, I will try to explain you what is criteria of aneurysm. So when do you call it aneurysm? So this is what is very important to understand that there should be a dilatation beyond the limit when you will call it as aneurysm. So the most important thing that you need to understand here is dilatation of artery so dilatation of artery with increase in original diameter so with increase in original diameter by more than 50 percent so if there is dilatation at any point and it is more than 50 percent then only you will call it aneurysm now when you talk about aneurysms aneurysms are of two types what are the two types of aneurysms one is a true aneurysm and one is a pseudo aneurysm now what is the difference between true aneurysm versus pseudo aneurysm same as it is versus a true diverticulum versus pseudo diverticulum now what is true aneurysm all layers all layers of artery they are involved so all layers of artery are involved so the dilatation is complete now when you talk about pseudo it is or uh, it is not all the layers not all layers involved what do you mean by not all layers involved now if suppose there is a there is an accumulation of blood in between the intima and the media or media and the adventitia that is what is known as a pseudo aneurysm so basically trauma infections yeah, Marfan's the very common cause for pseudo aneurysm. But let us try to understand. Aneurysm per se is a very big topic, but I will try to concise it. So when you talk about the aneurysms, now the most common large vessel aneurysm and most common aneurysm, there are two important questions. So most common aneurysm of your body, yes, you are guessing it right. It's Berry's aneurysm. So it's Berry's aneurysm. But most common large vessel aneurysm is aortic aneurysm so when we talk about aortic aneurysm now we need to understand that aorta is also very long so what part of aorta if involved will say what category of aneurysm so aortic aneurysm is again of three basic types now you'll say what i have heard of two types but sir three basic types yeah so one is involving the ascending aorta so that is what is known as or you can say one is involving the thoracic part of the aorta. So, you can say thoracic aortic aneurysm. So, we have thoracic aortic aneurysm. I would use the term double A for this. Then we have something which is known as abdominal aortic aneurysm. So, we have thoracic aortic aneurysm and abdominal aortic aneurysm. Then one more important thing is there is a category of aneurysm which starts at the level of thoracic aorta, goes up to the what? Abdominal aorta. So that is what is known as the thoracoabdominal aneurysm. So thoracoabdominal aneurysm, aortic aneurysm, abdominal aortic aneurysm and thoracic. Now let us see, thoracic also is further subdivided into. So if you talk about the types of thoracic, it is first is the ascending aortic. So the ascending, ascending thoracic aortic aneurysm, this is one thing. Then we have the second is the arch thoracic aortic aneurysm. The third thing that you need to understand is it could be involving the descending thoracic aorta. So descending thoracic aortic aneurysm. Amongst the thoracic aorta or you can say thoracic part of the aneurysms, it is the most common thoracic aortic aneurysm. Overall, which is most common, it is abdominal. So overall, if you talk about overall, the most common aneurysm is the abdominal aortic aneurysm when we talk about the aortic aneurysms. Now descending thoracic aorta 
is further of three types. It is type A, type B and type C. Now what is type A, what is type B and what is type C. Now this is again very 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 important. Now type A is, if you talk about the descending thoracic aorta, how do we see this? So try to understand this basic diagram of, so this is the diaphragm. So we can say this, this is the diaphragm and above the diaphragm it is the thoracic aorta. Now, how, when, you will you, when will you call it to be a descending thoracic aorta? It is after the origin of left subclavian artery that you will call the segment of thoracic aorta as descending. So, the type A is from the left subclavian artery up to the level of up to the level of 6th intercostal space. This is what is type A. So, what is type A? From the left, so origin if you talk about from the left subclavian artery up to the level of 6th intercostal space. Now, this is what is very, very, very important. Now, what is type B? This is again you have to understand. I will show you an image also. From the level of 6th intercostal space. So, aneurysm starting at the level of 6th intercostal space, extending up to the 12th intercostal space. Now, you will say, sir, what is 12th intercostal space? Because we do not have the 13th rib. So, it is the space between the diaphragm and the 12th posterior rib. So that space hypothetically is known as 12th intercostal space. Basically, this you can say up to the diaphragm or from the 6th to the 12th rib also that is justified. And then amongst them, what is a type C? The type C is a type which starts at the level of left subclavian artery and goes right up to the level of 12th intercostal space or you can say the diaphragm. So this is from the 6th rib from the 6th intercostal space up to the level of diaphragm and this is from the left subclavian, art, uh, uh, left subclavian artery up to the level of diaphragm. So amongst them it is a type C which is the longest, so di diaphragm you say, the 12th rib you say, the 12th intercostal space you say. Next is, let us talk about the abdominal thoracic outer, uh, abdominal outer. So when we talk about the abdominal outer, what are the types? So it could be infrarenal. What do you mean by infrarenal? That means the abdominal aortic, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm segment, it is below the level of the origin of you can say renal artery. So infrarenal triple A, do you know this is the most common type overall. So overall if someone asks what is the most common type, it is the infrarenal that is the aortic aneurysmal segment is below the renal artery level. The second is it could be involving, so juxta renal AAA, so it could be juxta renal AAA and the third variety, it could be supra renal AAA. Now, do you know that juxta renal and supra renal AAA, they are uncommon. Now, why they are uncommon? Because they are frequently seen in females and aortic aneurysm by exception, gender predisposition, it is lesser in terms of incidence in female. So, females, diabetics, and the knee grows. So why the aneurysm is lesser in diabetics because of the stiffer wall. Female there is a gender based predisposition that aneurysm, aneurysms are many times often seen in males and then knee grows also there is a you can say their intima is more strengthier in comparison to the whites. This is what is the reason. So females they are actually lesser in incidence but one irony fact is the aneurysms occur incidence wise lesser in or there is rare in females but if they occur they have a higher chance of what rupture that is what is again because of the estrogen. Anyways the third category is the thoraco abdominal aneurysm. So let us try to understand what is the concept of thoraco abdominal aneurysm. So when you talk about thoraco, thoraco abdominal, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Now, what is the challenge here that you get to see thoraco abdominal aortic aneurysm? The answer is it extends from thoracic aorta and goes right up to the you can say abdominal aorta. So, we should be having the further bifurcations of this. Yes, exactly. So, there is a classification that we have for this and the name of that classification is modified Crawford classification. So, what type of classification is this? Modified Crawford classification. So when we talk about modified Crawford classification, what are the things that you need to remember? They are further of five types. So let us try to understand. 
uh, I will be more pictorial in this. So if you see this is outer. Now this could be taken as a level of diaphragm. And since the renal artery play a very important benchmark. So let us see this to be the level of renal artery. So let us take this to be renal artery level. Now one more thing that is very important answer is left subclavian artery. So after the left subclavian artery the descending outer starts. So thoracoabdominal aneurysms they are typically seen extending from descending part of the outer thoracic outer basically up to the abdominal outer to variable levels. So what are the levels that we have the type 1 extends from the you can say the origin is just distal to the origin of left subclavian. So from the level of left subclavian let us take and it goes right up to the level of what students renal artery. So the type 1 starts or begins at the level of left subclavian goes up to the level of renal artery. Then we have type 2. So type 2 is actually extending throughout the length of aorta up to the bifurcation from the level of left subclavian. So from the level of left subclavian this goes right up to the level of what students the bifurcation of aorta. So this is what is bifurcation of aorta. So you can see that this should be the longest type indeed you are right yes this is the longest type. The third variety is a variety which starts at the level of 6th intercostal space and goes right up to the level of left uh, you can say right up to the level of bifurcation. So 2 and 3 they have same termination and 1 and 2 they have same origin and then students we have the type fourth that is starting at the level of 12th rib and going right up to the level of bifurcation. So this is type 4. Now you will say sir okay type 1 is there, type 2 is there, type 4 is there. Then why you have said type 5? The conventional Crawford had only 4. Now we have one more that is the type 5. And what is type 5 students? You have to understand that from the level of 6th intercostal space up to the level of renal artery. Now this is what is the type 5. So this is what is very simple to understand. 2, 3, 4 they have same termination. 2 being the longest. 1 and 2 have the same origin. So this is what is modified Crawford. Next is how do you evaluate these patients and how do you manage. It is very 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 simple to understand. So when you talk about the management understand the investigation of choice is the CT angiography. So you need to undergo CT angio. Why and what do you need? Answer is you need the aortic aneurysm diameter. So aortic aneurysm diameter this is the most important factor to decide what should be the management. Now what is the classical treatment that we have? So this is very very simple. I will try to summarize it. Usually in class I teach this topic for a very long time. So for that you have to subscribe to my lectures. But right now I want to teach it in a concise way. So when we talk about treatment there are two things that we have right now. Earlier we were not having anything other than surgery or observation. So either you can go for surgery or you can go for Ever. Now what is Ever students? Ever stands for endovascular aneurysmal repair. So endovascular aneurysmal repair that we will see will cover up in detail in some different video. But right now it is very important for you to understand the concept of Ever and surgery. I just brush up this concept. So when you are talking about surgery there are two important things. I am not interested about what we do. The most important thing is what is the inclusion criteria which patient would you consider safe for the surgery. The answer is what is the fear that is there answer is it is fear of rupture. Now for that you need to be cautious about the diameter. So cross sectional diameter cross sectional diameter this is what is very 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 important. So if the cross sectional diameter is more than equal to 5.5 centimeter this is one thing or students or 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 more than more than 4 to 4.5 centimeter in case of female so generally I have told that females are protected 
बट इन फीमेल्स द रिस्क ऑफ रप्चर इज वेरी हाई सो फीमेल्स और मार्फंस वाई मार्फन इज इंक्लूडेड इन दिस बिकॉज इन मार्फंस इट्स अ कोलेजन वैस्कुलर डिसऑर्डर वेर द मीडियल डी जनरेशन एक्चुअली प्री डिस्पोज अ क्विक रप्चर थर्ड इज थर्ड इज इंक्रीज इन डायमीटर रेट इज अगेन वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट सो इंक्रीज इन डायमीटर बाय मोर देन इक्वल टू वन सेंटीमीटर पर ईयर और स्टूडेंट्स और बाय मोर देन इक्वल टू फाइव एम एम बाय सिक्स मंथ सो विद इन सिक्स मंथ इफ इट इज इंक्रीजिंग एट अ रेट ऑफ मोर देन फाइव एम एम दैट इज अगेन वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट सो दीज आर सर्टन थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू कीप इन माइंड there are more subdivisions whenever i teach super specialty students i tell that okay the basic consensus is more than 5.5 but if you talk specially of the thoracic aortic aneurysms so for ascending aortic as well as arch aortic if the diameter is more than 5 then also you can go for the repair that is what is now what is the second concept what surgery do we do the surgery when we talk about we go for resection we go for resection of aneurysmal segment so resection of aneurysm and along with that along with that we go for a decron graft repair so we go for resection along with decron decron graft repair now these are some very 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 simple and important things that we need to understand i'll take you to the image and you can see all the different crawfords in front of you this is crawford 1 2 3 4 5 you can get this in exam it's a hot favorite topic and this is the descending aortic uh, classification so i told you from left subclavian to 6 from 6 it is up to the diaphragm and then complete length so i will also show you what is the classical management so the classical incision that we make is a thoraco abdominal thoraco abdominal we have this classical incision and then the next task is you need to just uh, expose the aorta cut open the adventitia now this is what is, what you are doing cutting open of the adventitia now when you are cutting opening it there are lot of lumbar vessels which are getting collaterals out of the aorta so you need to close these vessels also otherwise there will be a bad flow via collaterals and then the next is you need to take the graft decron graft and you need to go for a suturing now the suture of choice here is proline you know proline is the suture of choice for vascular surgery and this is how you can uh, modify the graft according to the segment which is involved so this is what is very 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 important and then you can close off the adventitia so this is how you manage the things now i will not go in much depth but definitely i will talk about the concept of ever i'll make you leave uh, you can say a uh, bit inquisitive about ever but definitely i will tell you what is ever all about so there was an era when there was no substitute other than surgery then came a new an era of stents so now stents revolutionized the things and now most of the patients who are planning for surgery they try to delay the surgery by using a lot of stents so ever is again the very same concept now what is the concept why you are worried the answer is you are worried because it could rupture so placement so what is ever it is nothing but placement of im permeable im permeable stent across aneurysmal segment so when you talk about placement of a stent which is im permeable what is the aim what aim are you going to get so if you place an impermeable stent this stent is going to cut off the cut off blood entry blood entry into into the aneurysmal sac now you will say sir how is this possible i'll just show you the concept brief concept so even if the patient is not fitting into that criteria of aneurysmal repair you can take a stent you can take a stent and you can just place it across the aneurysm so patients who are not fit for surgery they are the ideal candidates the patients who are not filling into this category of you can say uh, in diameter they are also and this stent has barbs they will fix into the thick wall of the aorta so now you can see the blood which is trying to enter into the stent is passed into the distal segment no blood is going to enter so the aneurysmal sac is not going to expand unfortunately even if it ruptures also there will be no problem because the blood flow to the distal part is continued 
So there are a lot of complications of uh, ever which are known as uh, endo leaks where the blood manages to enter maybe because of porous graft fabric, maybe because of the loose fitting, maybe because of the back flow. So these are all endo leaks. We have five types of endo leaks but about that in detail in some different lecture. One very important thing that you need to understand is could it be used for juxta or could it be used for suprarenal? Theoretically it is. Why? Because you can use a fenestrated. Fenestrated stents are there. Market says that fenestrated stents are there. You can fenestrate and take out the limbs into the renal artery. But try to understand the diameter of renal artery is far less than the diameter of aorta. And there is a high incidence of RAT. What is RAT? Renal artery thrombosis. So practically we don't do. But theoretically yes it is possible. We do it in thoracic aortic aneurysm. That is what is known as TAVR. So dear students I hope you enjoyed this uh, small crisp video. And do comment in the comment section how you liked, do share it with your friends, try to learn and uh, just uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, just uh, tell other students also about these lectures. Thank you.